a right class. Um, so we started talking about NMR last time, nuclear magnetic resonance. We're going to continue talking about NMR and finish it up today. But before I do that, it really helps to kind of summarize what we talked about and to remind you what we did last time. Well, the first thing you need to remember, and this is really key, that NMR gives a peak for each unique set of protons that you have. And that's very key, that you are going to get a peak for each unique set of protons that you have. So far, so good. Okay, so that's how you're going to get your peaks. Now, once you've got your peaks, there are three things you need to care about for each peak. The first thing is chemical shifts. You have to look at the chemical shifts to see what is their PPM, where do they show up. The second thing, we talked about integration. Basically, how many hydrogen is associated to each peak. And the last one was, and that was a fun one, spin, spin, splitting. What type of peak are you going to have? You're going to have a singlet, a doublet, a triplet, a quartet, a multiplet. What kind of peak you're going to have? So you're going to look at NMR. You're going to go, what's the chemical shape? What's the integration? What's the spin, spin, splitting? And then from all of that, you can figure out what your structure is. So far, so good. Okay. Now, let's start off with a practice problem. Here is our practice problem. Okay. Now, I want you to tell me, first of all, how many peaks I'm going to have on my NMR spectrum for this compound. So that's the first thing I'm going to tell me. Pause me, figure this out. How many peaks am I going to have on my NMR spectrum for this? The answer is yes, you're going to have three peaks because you are going to have three unique sets of protons. The first one is going to be right here. And you know what? Just for fun, I'm actually going to draw the hydrogen, right? You don't have to do that. Probably by this point, you can do them pretty fast in your head. But I want to do it just for today. So you guys are still very clear about how to figure out the unique sets of protons. Okay. So far, so good. Now, over here, we have these three hydrogen attached to a carbon. We have this CH3, and this carbon is attached to a carbonyl. So this is a unique set of proton. I'm going to call that A. Okay. Now, next one, over here, how about these? Yeah, these two CH are attached to the same carbon. is a CH2, and these are a unique set of proton. On one side, they're attached to an oxygen, this carbon. On the other side, the carbon is attached to a CH3. How about these ones over here? What do you think? Are those a unique set of proton? They are a unique set of proton. Now, you may be, uh, you may be asking me, okay, hold on a second. This is a CH3. Over here was also a CH3. Correct. But they are attached to different neighbors. The neighbors are different. This car, these hydrogens, the carbon that is attached to this hydrogen is connected to a carbonyl. The carbon that is attached to this hydrogen is connected to a CH2. So their neighbors are different. Your neighbors are different. You are going to be unique. So these are the three unique peak that we have. Okay. These are the three unique peak that we're going to have. Okay. That's the first thing. And that's really key to know how many peaks to expect for on for the NMR. So three peaks, it's the magic number. So far, so good. Well, magic number in this case. Now, let's go over the chemical shifts. And you have the handout in front of you. I give you a handout and I went over every single um, point, every single number on that handout. So when you look at that handout, let's figure out what is the chemical shift for each of these. What's the chemical shift for each of these. Now, the ones, the A, remember, this carbon 
is attached to a carbonyl. So the carbon bonded to this hydrogen is attached to a carbonyl. We said every time that's the case, it would be around 2 ppm. You would end up being around 2 ppm would be the chemical shift. So far so good? Okay. Let's come over here. Now, the carbon attached to these unique sets of hydrogen, this carbon is directly attached to oxygen. And oxygen is electronegative. So oxygen is pulling all these electrons this way, which is going to make it to be de-shielded. Here, right? It's going to feel the magnetic field more because all the electrons are pushed this way. So this one is going to be a little bit more naked. It can feel the magnetic field more. So it's going to be more downfield, this is going to be 4 ppm, right? This is going to be about 4 ppm. We talked about that. I'm going to repeat it again. So if you have carbon bonded into hydrogen, if this carbon is attached to a carbonyl, you show up about 2 ppm. If that carbon is directly attached to an oxygen, that's going to be more downfield. That's going to show up around 4 ppm. So far, so good. Okay, now how about this one right here? Again, this is just attached to a carbon. Now, this carbon is attached to an oxygen, so I think it's going to be a little bit more than 1, right? If there was no oxygen here, this would be around 1 ppm, but there is an oxygen a little bit farther away, so this peak should be, it's going to be probably around 1.2 ppm. Uh, the oxygen is not directly attached to it and is basically one carbon over, um, but it still is going to feel it a little bit. So instead of being 1 ppm, it might be around 1.2 ppm. So far, so good. All right. So these are the P ppms. These are the chemical shifts we expect. So we know how many peaks we have. We know the chemical shifts. Now, how about the integration? What's going to be integration? Remember, integration is number of hydrogen for each peak. For A, I expect my integration to be 3 hydrogen, right? For B, I expect my integration to be 2 hydrogen. For C, I expect my integration to be 3 hydrogen. So far, so good? Okay. Now, so integration, again, number of hydrogen per peak. We got that. The last one is what type of peak am I expecting? Singlet, doublet, triplet? Let's go over that. Uh, now, just, just before I go that, just one more time, I just want to make sure everyone, everyone is on the same page. The reason integration is three hydrogen here is because this, this peak, it has three hydrogen. This peak has two, so I better get two hydrogen for that peak. I have three hydrogen, so I better get three hydrogen. So it's basically the number of hydrogen per peak. All right, now spin, spin, splitting. We said for that, we have to look at N plus one rule, right? You have to look at adjacent carbon to see how many hydrogen they have, and that would be my N, and then add one to it. Ready to do it? Let's do it. So when I look at this one, the adjacent carbon has how many hydrogen? It has no hydrogen. The adjacent carbon has no hydrogen. So my N is zero, plus one would be one. What I would expect here, I would expect a singlet because the adjacent carbon has no hydrogen. So when you see a singlet on an NMR spectrum, that's really, that's really telling. You go, oh, the adjacent carbon has no hydrogen. So far, so good. Okay, let's come over here. The one adjacent is oxygen. It has no hydrogen. The other adjacent is a carbon that has three hydrogen. So one side, it has no hydrogen, and the other side, the adjacent carbon, has three hydrogen. So my N is three. Three plus one is four. So this is going to be a quartet. This is going to be a, oh boy, it was not a nice drawing at all. There we go. This is going to be a quartet. So far, so good. All right. Now, how about the last one? What do you think? Uh, it only has one neighbor, right? It only has one adjacent carbon. And that one adjacent carbon has how many hydrogen? The adjacent carbon has two hydrogen, right? So my N is two. Two plus one is three. So what I expect here, I expect a triplet. I expect a triplet. So far, so good. Okay. 
So what I would expect for NMR, I'm going to have a peak at 2 ppm. It's going to be a singlet and the integration is going to show three hydrogen. I want to get a peak at about 4 ppm. It's going to be a quartet and the integration is going to show two hydrogen. I'm going to get a peak around 1.2 ppm. The integration is going to show three hydrogen and it's going to be a triplet. Not too bad, yeah? Okay, let's do a couple more practice problem. So now that we've done a practice problem and you remember chemical shift, integration, spin, spin, splitting, let's go back to spin, spin, splitting. That's the last thing we talked about last time, right? And we gotta do more practice problems to make sure you really get this one down. And I wanna go over the N plus one rule again because when I put this up, it was like, whoa, this, what is this? And now you understand it a little bit more. So N plus one rule is number of, the N is number of hydrogen on an adjacent carbon or the same carbon that are equivalent to each other, but non-equivalent to the hydrogen that we are looking at. This makes a lot of more sense, but it's gonna keep making more and more sense. So let's do our next practice problem, okay? Again, right now, what I'm focusing in this lecture, I'm gonna keep going with a spin, spin, splitting to make sure you got this down. So here's my compound. First of all, how many peaks would you expect on the NMR? What do you think? How many peaks? Now, here we have one unique set of protons. Okay, and I'm going to call them A. Now, this one, the neighbor is a Cl, and the other neighbor is a CH2 attached to a Cl. Now, how about this one? Hmm, this one has exactly the same neighbor as HAs, right? Because this H that I label them A, neighbor Cl, neighbor CH2Cl, now these are have exactly the same neighbor, neighbor Cl, neighbor CH2 attached to Cl. So these two are equivalent because they have exactly the same neighbor. Or the other way to kind of look at this is symmetry, right? We talk about, you can also look at symmetry. Symmetry is a nice way to kind of see if, um, if those protons are equivalent to each other. Okay, so um, what does this mean? What this means is we only have one peak. We're only going to have one peak for the NMR. We're just going to have one peak for the NMR because these are equivalent to each other. So far, so good. Okay. Now, what is going to be the integration for that one peak? You know that we're going to have one peak, but it should be four hydrogens. So the integration is going to be four hydrogen because four hydrogens are going to be corresponding to that, to that peak. Now, the next thing to think about, what is going to be a spin, spin, splitting? Is it going to be a singlet, quartet, triplet? What do you think? Now, probably the first thing you thought, and this is what I thought when I was undergrad, I was like, okay, this is easy. So this is going to be a triplet because here the neighbor has two hydrogen, the adjacent carbon has two hydrogen, two plus one is one, is going to be a triplet. This one is a little bit tricky. Now we're gonna go back to this rule. For N, number of hydrogen on adjacent carbon or the same carbon that are equivalent to each other, but non-equivalent to the hydrogen that we are looking at. So if you look at this, for example, this is equivalent to this. So these are equivalent to each other. So what is going to be the splitting? Is going to be a singlet because the N is going to be zero. Again, why is it the N is gonna be zero? Because these two are equivalent to each other. They're not gonna split each other up since they are equivalent to each other. So they have to be non-equivalent to the hydrogen that we're looking at. If you look at this, or we look at this, they're equivalent to each other. So this is going to be a singlet. You know, I'm doing the harder problems in class right now to get you ready. Okay, so far so good? All right, are you ready for next one? Okay, 
Let's do our next practice problem. The next one I'm going to put up is, I'm going to put up CH3 attached to CH2 attached to CH2 attached to BR. Okay? Okay, the first thing. How many peaks do we expect for NMR? Over here, these are unique, okay? Over here, these are, uh, what did I name this C? I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna name them A. These are unique, B. Are these unique or is it the same as B? What do you think? The same as B or no? Think about it, do they have the same neighbor? They do not have the same neighbor. The C, the B, H, B over here, is neighbor with CH3. But this one, the neighbor is BR. So they have these two have different neighbors from one side. So this is gonna be a unique set of protons. So far so good? Okay, again, look at neighbors, right? Look at the neighbors to see if they would be the same or would not be the same. So we have three peaks on NMR. That's what we expect. We expect them to have three peaks on NMR. Now, let's go for spin, spin, splitting. What type of peak do you expect for each one? What type of peak do you expect for each one? Let's go this one. This one is, a, is the easiest one. It only has one adjacent carbon, and that adjacent carbon has how many hydrogen? Two hydrogen. So two plus one would be a triplet. So far, so good. So the adjacent carbon has two hydrogen, N plus one rule, so N would be two, two plus one would be three. Okay, so this is easy. What I expect, I expect a triplet. Now, how about this one here, this CH2? You know what, let's skip that one for a second. Let's go over this one, this CH2 over here. This one, one side is BR, it has nothing. But from only one side, the adjacent carbon has two hydrogen. So what would this one be? also a triplet, right? Because it only has one adjacent carbon and that one adjacent carbon, it has two hydrogen, so two plus one is a triplet. Not bad. How about this one right here? This one has two adjacent carbon, right? This one has two adjacent carbon. Now, the two adjacent carbons are not equivalent to each other. Because the two adjacent carbon are not equivalent to each other, we cannot just add them up, right? If the two adjacent carbons were equivalent to each other, I could have said one, two, three, four, five, five plus one, I have a, a hexet. But I can't say that because these two are not equivalent to each other. You guys following me so far? Okay. Now, because those two are not equivalent to each other, so we cannot just add them together, we have to do two n plus one rule. So from one side, so I'm going to do n plus one times m plus one. So from one side, this is three, right? So it'll be three plus one. And the other side, this would be two, so I'm gonna do a two plus one. So three plus one, that is four, times two plus one, which is three, that would be a 12. Again, that's way too many peaks. What I would call it, I would just call it a multiplet. So you're gonna have a multiplet with many, many, many peaks. Do you guys follow that? Okay. Hopefully you follow that. Again, the reason that we couldn't add it together is because these two are not equivalent to each other. So I cannot just say one, two, three, four, five. I have to use this rule. If you're gonna go back over here again, number of hydrogen adjacent carbon or the same carbon that are equivalent to each other, but non-equivalent to the hydrogen that we're looking at. Okay, so yeah, these two are not equivalent to this, but they're not equivalent to each other either. Okay, hopefully you guys are following me so far. Now, I want to, oh, let's do it over integration too before we do this. So for the peak A, I'm going to expect three hydrogen. For this peak over here, 
is going to be a multiplet. I'm going to expect two hydrogen, and this one should also be two hydrogen because it corresponds to a CH2. All right. Now, on this page, I'm going to put another problem up. CH3, CH2, CH3. Stay with me. It's going to make more sense. The first problem will make sense in a second. How many peaks do you expect for NMR? How many peaks are you expecting for NMR? Hopefully you're saying that you're expecting two peaks. You're expecting two peaks for NMR. Why are we expecting two peaks for NMR? Okay, let's go over it. This is unique. It's next to a CH2. This is unique. It's sandwiched between two CH3. This is the same as this one over here because they have the same neighbor. Neighbor CH2, neighbor CH2. And also, the other way to look at it, there is a symmetry going on, right? So there's a symmetry going on. So those are, those are equivalent to each other. So we have, what do we expect? We expect two peaks. We expect two peaks. You following so far? Okay. Now, for this peak, what are you expecting? The adjacent carbon has two hydrogen. So two plus one would be a triplet. Two plus one would be a triplet. So I'm expecting a triplet for this one. Okay. Now, what is going to be the integration of this? Remember, this peak is going to be for this one and for this one because these two are equivalent to each other. So the integration, I'm going to expect six hydrogen. Okay. So the integration, I'm going to expect six hydrogen. Beautiful. All right. So the second peak is going to be for CH2, right? It's going to be for CH2. Now, what type of peak do I expect? Now, remember this. I have one adjacent carbon. I have one adjacent carbon. But these two are equivalent to each other. Because these two are equivalent to each other, you can add them up. Okay? So this one and this one, they are equivalent to each other, right? Because they're equivalent to each other, we can add them up. They're additive. You can add them up. So for the N plus 1 rule, it would be the N would be 6 plus 1. I get a septet or a heptet. Okay. Again, I'm going to just name that as a multiplet, right? Because when we have more than 5, 6, I'm just going to call it a multiplet. But the point was, I can add these two together. So I'm looking at this. It has two adjacent carbon. But those two adjacent carbon are equivalent to each other. So I can add them up. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. For n plus 1, it would be 6 plus 1. It would be 7. I would expect 7 lines. Yeah. And um, the integration has to be 2 hydrogen, right? Because this is CH2. Now, let's go over this one more time. You got this. Let's go over this one more time. So here, you got this down. These two are equivalent to each other, so I can add them up. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I have 6 neighboring hydrogen. 6 plus 1 is 7. Now here, the problem was, when we were looking at this, when we were looking at this, this and this, these are not equivalent to each other. So I cannot add them up. Because these two are not equivalent to each other, right? This one and this one are not equivalent to each other. If they're not equivalent to each other, you cannot add them up. They're not equivalent to each other, you cannot add them up. So we have to use this rule, n plus 1 times n plus 1. One side, 3 plus 1, 2 plus 1, and then you just multiply them together. And you get 12 peak, which will be just a multiplet. Is going to have a lot of peaks. Yeah? Okay. You guys feeling pretty good about this? Let's do the next problem. Now I'm going to give you a problem to make sure our last couple problems made sense. Do me a favor. Pause this video. Do this on your own. And I'm going to go over it together. How many peaks do you expect? And what's this thing splitting for each one? So hopefully you know. 
This is unique. I'm going to call this A. This is unique. I want to call it B. This is unique. I want to call it C. Now, why is this not equivalent to this? Because this has different neighbor. This CH2 has one side has a methyl, the other side has a CH2. But this one is sandwiched between two CH2. So these two have different neighbors. These two have different neighbors. If you have different neighbors, you are not equivalent to each other. Okay. Now, how about this one over here? Is this one a unique peak? That one is not a unique peak because one side has a CH3 and the other side has a CH2, CH2, CH3. Who else had that? HP. HP had a CH3 and then CH2, CH2, CH3. So this is not equivalent. This is just B, the same as this one. This is just the same as A. Think about it again. There's a symmetry going on right here. Look for symmetries. Look for symmetries to see if things are equivalent or not equivalent. So far, so good. So one, two, three peaks. I'm expecting three peaks on NMR. I'm, I'm giving you hard problems because hard is good. Let's do the hard now. So exam will be easy for you. So three peaks, that's what we got. Now, the next thing we're gonna do, let's figure out what type of peaks we are going to have. For A, that's easy, right? Because it has one neighbor, it has one adjacent carbon, and that adjacent carbon has two hydrogen, okay? That adjacent carbon has two hydrogen, so two plus one is three, so what I have for this, I'm going to have a triplet. You got to follow me so far? Okay. Now, what is going to be integration for this triplet? I want you to think about it before you answer me. What's going to be the integration for this triplet? Remember, we have two sets of A, don't we? So the integration should be six hydrogen to account for that. Yeah? Now, let's go look at B. B has two adjacent carbon. Now, these two adjacent carbon are not equivalent to each other, right? So, B has two adjacent carbon, has C and A. C and A are not equivalent to each other, right? So, if they're not equivalent to each other, we cannot just add them up. If they're not equivalent to each other, we cannot add them up. So then what do we have to do? What do we have to use? We have to say, okay, let's look at A. What A has, A has three hydrogen, right? A has three hydrogen. So it would be three plus one times, let's look at B. B has two hydrogen, two plus one, which would be 12 so I have a multiplet. You guys follow that? Again, the reason is because I'm looking at HP, the adjacent carbon, these are not equivalent to each other. So I have to use N plus one times N plus one. I cannot add it together. You cannot add it together because these two are not equivalent to each other. Are we good so far? Okay. Now, Let's go to C. What's going on over here? What do you think? What is, oh, before we do that, um, how many, what's the integration for, for B? What do you expect for that pick the integration to be? The, just two hydrogen? Because again, integration is how many hydrogen is associated to this peak? This peak is for this, this has two hydrogen. This has two hydrogen. Okay, now let's see. What do you expect for C? So my set of C has two neighbors. It has a B neighbor and it has a B neighbor. Those two are equivalent to each other. So if you're equivalent to each other, you can just add them up together, right? You can just add, they're additive because the neighbors, which is this one and this one, are equivalent to each other, so you can just add them up. They're equivalent to each other, you can just add them up, okay? So, I, what does that mean? I have one, two, three, four. I have one, two, three, four. 
it will be 4 plus 1, that would be 5. Okay, I'm going to have a pentad. I would have 5 now for that. You guys are good so far? Yeah? Okay. One, two, three, four, five. That's what I'm going to end up. All right, what would be the integration for this one? Again, that one has two hydrogen. I'm just going to put two hydrogen. That's going to be integration. So what do we expect? We expect three peaks, right? Because we have three unique sets of protons. This one, A, okay, one neighbor, one adjacent carbon, it has two hydrogen, two plus one, I'm going to get a triplet. Not bad at all. It's just two plus one, I'm going to get a triplet. All right, now B is a little more complicated. B has two adjacent carbon. Those two adjacent carbon are not equivalent to each other, so I have to use the long way. I get a lot of peaks, I'm just going to call it multiplet. Okay, now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go to C. If I go to C, C has two adjacent carbon, but the two adjacent carbon are equivalent to each other, so I can add them up together. So one, two, three, four. So four plus one would be five. I'm gonna have a pentet. All right, I made one mistake. Hopefully right now, you know what mistake I made. I didn't make a mistake actually, I was testing you. Um, where did I go wrong? Where did I go wrong? So remember, B and B, we have two B. These are equivalent to each other. So what should the integration end up being? The integration should end up being four hydrogen, right? The integration should end up being four hydrogen because it's this one and this one. One, two, three, four. I have four hydrogen for that peak. I have four hydrogen for that peak. Yeah? Okay. These are hard problems, but hard is good. Um, hopefully this one, you guys, uh, I was just testing you, but hopefully you got it done now. All right, beautiful. Ready for next one? Let's keep going. I'm going to have a CL, CH2, 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 CL. All right, we've done a million problems. So I'm hoping you're going to pause me. You're going to do this problem and you're going to get it right for me. Okay, ready? Let's do this. So how many peaks do you expect? How many unique sets of proton do we have? Yes, we have. This is unique, yeah. Is this unique? Yeah, because this one has Cl, CH2, CH2, Cl. This one is sandwiched between two CH2. Um, is this one unique? That one is not unique. It's the same as A, couple things. There is symmetry going on, okay? We should always look for symmetry. That helps. And also look at the neighbors. Look at the neighbors. This one is neighboring with a CL. The other side is a CH2, CH2, CL. Now, this one is exactly the same. Neighbor is CL. The other one, CH2, CH2, CL. Same neighbor, okay? We're going to be, we're going to be, we're going to be equivalent. So they're equivalent to each other. How many peaks? We're going to have two peaks on NMR. Now, let's figure out what kind of splitting do we expect. For A, what do you expect? For A, one side, there's no hydrogen. There's only one adjacent carbon that has two hydrogens, okay? Adjacent carbon that has two hydrogen. So the M plus one rule would be two plus one, which would be three. What do I get? For A, I'm going to get a triplet. So far, so good? Okay. What am I going to get for B? Now, for B, you have to pay attention. It has two adjacent carbon, right? The two adjacent carbon are equivalent to each other. These are our equivalent to each other. Because the two adjacent carbon are equivalent to each other, you can add them up. You can add them up, right? It has two adjacent carbon. When the two adjacent carbon are equivalent to each other, so you can add them up. Okay, perfect. So that would be one, two, three, four. It would be four plus one. That would be five. So I'm getting, I'm going to expect a pentate. 
Pentit. There we go. These are the two peaks I'm expecting. Now, for peak A, how many hydrogen do I expect? Answer me carefully. Yes, four hydrogen. And for peak B, I expect two hydrogen. Again, peak B is right here, is unique. Is that it had just two hydrogen there. Now, peak A is for this one and for this one because we have two equivalents. So one, two, three, four. So this peak is associated with four hydrogen. This peak is associated with four hydrogen, two CH2s that are equivalent to each other. Yeah? Okay. Hopefully you are getting this down. Now what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about spin, spin splitting. I know we've been talking about this. But spin spin splitting for alkene. Yeah, everything we've talked about so far, they've been alkane. We forgot about alkene. Now, every time people tell me anything about alkene, the first thing that I kind of write to myself and remind myself is that don't forget when you have alkene, there is no free rotation. And that makes a difference. We went over how many unique sets of proton you have and how to look at it when you have alkene. Make sure you go back to that lecture and then review that one. All right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put up three alkenes for you. I'm gonna put up three alkenes. I'm drawing the hydrogens out. This is one of them. All right, here's another one. Okay, I have three alkenes. Let me, let me move this one a little bit over there so I have more room. Move this a little bit over here. All right, these are my three alkenes. Now, let's come over here. Look at these two hydrogens. Are they equivalent to each other, yes or no? The answer is they are not equivalent to each other. I'm gonna call this A, I'm gonna call this B. We went over this, but I wanna review it one more time. The reason that they're not equivalent, because when you have alkene, you have to keep in mind that there is no free rotation here. This is locked. Because this is locked, it really matters what is cis and trans to it. HA, when HA looks at the window, cis is going to be a methyl, trans is going to be a CL. When HB looks at the, looks at the window, cis is going to be a CL, trans is going to be a methyl. So they will see different things. Because of that, these are not equivalent to each other. So far, so good. Okay. Now, what we call this, we call this geminal H. Draw on the same carbon, we call this geminal H. Okay, now let's come over here. Are these two equivalent to each other? No, on a different carbon. I'm going to call this one A, and I'm going to call this one B. Now, what's the relationship between these two? Those are cis to each other, right? Those are cis hydrogens. All right, over here. Of course, these are not equivalent to each other. They're attached to different carbons. What's the relationship between those two? Yeah, they're trans H's. So far, so good. Okay. Now, when you look at these two, so these are not equivalent to each other, what kind of splitting do you expect? Here, the adjacent carbon has no hydrogen. The adjacent carbon has no hydrogen, but these two are not equivalent to each other. So they're gonna be split by each other. So it, this would be one, so N plus one is two. So what I would end up with, I would end up getting a doublet here, and I end up getting a doublet for this one, because these two are not equivalent to each other, so they will split each other up. And again, the adjacent carbon doesn't really have any hydrogen. So far, so good, okay. Now, 
let's go over here are these two equivalent to each other they're not equivalent to each other okay now the adjacent carbon has one hydrogen not equivalent to this so it's going to be split by that so what do i expect again i expect a doublet okay the same idea here i'm also going to be expecting some doublets here right because the adjacent carbon one hydrogen and i'm going to be expecting that so bunch of doublets is what i'm expecting how would i distinguish if they're cis to each other they're trans to each other they're gem how would i distinguish the key is to be able to tell if you have a cis or you have a trans when it's a little bit hard to tell because the splitting is going to be the same the number of integration is going to be the same the key is looking at the um coupling constant we went over coupling constant a few lectures ago make sure go over that if you have a gem the coupling constant is 0 to 3 hertz if you have a cis the coupling constant is 5 to 10 hertz if you have a trans the coupling constant is 11 to 18 hertz so when the coupling constant is very large and again remember the coupling constant was here right the difference between those two lines so when a coupling constant, and these are the coupling constant here, the distance over there, and the coupling constant is really, really large, then I know I have trans. If the coupling constant is a 5 to 10, then I know I have cis. So coupling constant comes into play when we talk about alkene. So far, so good? Okay. Nice job. Now, let's do a, let's do a problem. I'm going to give you two compounds. Um, by the way, really nice job hanging in there. I know these are the first time you're hearing these things. You will get used to them very soon. We'll do a lot more practice problems once we're done talking about NMR. Okay, so this is one. And then I'm going to give you another compound. COH, you all know COH is carboxylic acid. Okay, so I'm giving you alkene, right? Now, over here, these two hydrogen are what? Are trans to each other. I'm going to say HA and HB, they're, they're different, they're unique. Um, now, over here, I'm going to say HA and HB, these are cis to each other. They're also very unique, yeah? Okay. Now, let's go over this. For HA, what are you expecting? For HA, this is a carbon, right? This adjacent carbon has no hydrogen. So what you are expecting for HA and this adjacent carbon has one hydrogen, right? So there's one hydrogen on the adjacent carbons. One, car one hydrogen adjacent carbon. So what you're expecting, you're expecting a doublet for A. This is my A. I'm expecting a doublet. So far, so good? Okay. Now, what are you expecting for HP? Again, the adjacent carbon is only one hydrogen over here, right? So the adjacent carbon has one hydrogen, N plus one, what I'm expecting, I'm expecting a doublet. Okay, so HA is going to be a doublet and HB is going to be a doublet. So far so good? Beautiful. Let's come over here. You're going to have an HA and HB. The adjacent carbon has only one hydrogen. Here also, the adjacent carbon has only one hydrogen. So N plus one, what I'm expecting again, I'm expecting a doublet, and I'm expecting a doublet for HA and for HP. I'm gonna take a step back. I just wanna make sure that everyone's on the same page as me, especially that you can't really ask questions. Um, I wanna make sure. So here, if you look at the HA and HP, the in all the cases, the adjacent carbon has one hydrogen, right? The adjacent carbon has one hydrogen. I want you to kind of pay attention to that. 
So like over here, the adjacent carbon has one hydrogen, right? You want to go over here, the adjacent carbon has one hydrogen. So N plus one, you're going to be double it, double it, it's going to be double it, it's going to be double it. Okay. So, well, this is a problem. The only difference between these two compounds, the only difference between these two compounds is one is cis and the other one is trans. How would you be able to distinguish this based on NMR? Because both, are going to show doublets of doublet. This is what they call it. They're both going to show doublets. So how you would, would you distinguish if you have a cis versus you have a trans when they are showing you the same doublets on NMR? That's when the coupling constant is going to come into play. You would look at the coupling constant, right? You would look at the coupling constant. And we talked about it right here. If the coupling constant is really, really large, then most likely you're going to have a trans. If the coupling constant between 5 to 10, then you are going to have a cis. And the coupling constant is the distance between these two peaks. So far, so good? Okay, the distance over here, those are the coupling constant. So over here, when I have a cis, I'm expecting the coupling constant to be what? I'm expecting the coupling constant to be around 5 to 10 hertz. Over here, when I have trans, I'm expecting those coupling constant to be 11 to 18 hertz. So the key is coupling constants. Looking at the coupling constants to be able to know if you have a cis or you have a trans. Okay, nice job. Now I'm gonna put up another compound. Let me see. I'm gonna put all the hydrogens out too to show you that I'm emphasizing on the hydrogen. All right, so far so good. Okay. First of all, how many peaks would you expect on the NMR? How many peaks would you expect on the NMR? What do you think? Let's go over it together. This one is one set of unique peak. That's pretty easy, right? Okay. And then we have all these other hydrogens. Are they equivalent to each other? No, this one is not equivalent. This one is on this carbon. Now, are these two equivalent to each other? They're on the same carbon. They're on the same carbon, but are they equivalent to each other? You have to look at cis and trans. So if I'm going to call this C, I'm going to call this D, and then we can erase them if they're equivalent to each other. So HC, when it looks out the window, the cis is going to be HB, the trans is going to be this ester-looking compound. When HD looks out the window, the cis is going to be this compound and the trans is going to be the HB. So what they, when they look at the window, what they see for cis and what they see for trans are different. So these two are going to be unique. So how many peaks do I get for NMR? I get four peaks for NMR. Again, the reason that we're talking about this, the reason that we're talking about this because there is no free rotation, right? When you have alkene, there is no free rotation. So this is locked. Because this is locked, it really matters what is cis and what is transferred to each other, to them. Okay, so far so good. Okay, so we know that we expect four peaks. That we know. Now let's go over the splitting. What would you expect for the HA? I have a CH3, what do you expect for that? The splitting. The adjacent carbon has no hydrogen, right? The adjacent carbon has no hydrogen, so what am I expecting? I'm just expecting a, a singlet. Yeah, expecting a singlet because the adjacent carbon has no hydrogen. Um, how about the chemical shift, what do you think? Around, yeah, 2 ppm, right? Because the adjacent carbon, this carbon is attached to a carbonyl. Okay, that's not bad. Now, let's go over the other ones. The other ones are a little bit more, more difficult to look at. Let's look at the other one. What's kind, of, what kind of a splitting 
do I expect? Okay, well, what sort of splitting do I expect? Let's go over to HP. Now, the adjacent carbon has these two that are not equivalent to each other, right? So the adjacent carbon has HC and HD. You guys like me so far? Okay. And these are not equivalent to each other. So HB would be split by HC and it would be split by HD. Okay. So what that means. So HP is going to be split, is going to be split by HC. So what I would get, I would get a doublet, right? Because it's only one, one plus one is two. Okay. Now, HP um, would also get split by HD. And that would be a doublet. So far, so good. Okay. So this would get split by this and would get split by that. So what we call this, what we call this, we're going to say doublet of doublets. Doublet of doublets. Yeah. We are looking at the adjacent carbon. Adjacent carbon has HC and HD. HC and HD are not equivalent to each other, right? So the HP is going to be split by HC. N plus one, that will be a doublet. It's going to be split by this one. N plus one, a doublet. So what HP ends up doing being a doublet of doublets. So far, so good. Okay, yeah. Now, how about HD? The same thing. It's going to get split by HC. It's going to get split with HB. So it ends up being a doublet of doublet. How about HC? The same thing. Split by this, split by this. Also is going to get a doublet of doublets. Now, the way you can distinguish them is don't forget, looking at the coupling constant, right? You have to look at the coupling constant. When HB gets split by HD over here, this is going to be trans, right? This is going to be trans. So the coupling constant is going to be what? It's going to be 11 to 18 hertz. You have to pay attention to that, right? Now, when HB got split by HD, this was cis. So if you have a cis, the coupling constant is going to be 5 to 10 hertz. So that's how you would be able to distinguish them. So far, so good? Okay. So again, the point is the HP is going to be split by two non-equivalence proton. And then what we're going to end up getting is doublet of doublets. And HC would also end up with doublets. Doublet of doublets. HD would also end up with doublet of doublets. Sounds cool, huh? Yeah? Okay. All right. Are we good so far? Yeah? Okay. The last thing I want to talk about and I promise you this is going to be the last thing, you probably don't trust me at this point, is benzene ring. I'm going to talk about benzene ring and then we're done with the NMR and I'm going to do nothing but practice problem to put the structures together. Okay. Now, benzene ring. Remember, on an NMR spectrum, it shows up between 6.5 to 8 ppm. If you have a peak between 6.5 to 8 ppm, bam, you have a benzene ring. Now, right now, if you were to put the hydrogens on here, one, two, three, four, five, six, you would have six equivalent hydrogen. Equivalent. Oh my goodness. Equivalent. 
Oh my god, what am I doing? I can't spell. Equivalent, right? I think so. Don't judge me, I can do chemistry. I can't spell, but I can do chemistry. So I have six equivalent hydrogen because these hydrogen are equivalent to each other, right? They're not unique. They're exactly in the same environment. So how many peak would I get on NMR? I would just get one peak. So if you just have benzene ring, if you just have benzene ring, what's going to happen is you're going to get one peak at about 7.27 ppm. You're just going to get one peak at about 7.27 ppm. If you just have a benzene ring with no substituent on it. So far so good? Okay. So you see a peak between 6.5 to 8 ppm, you go benzene ring. Now, if you just have a benzene ring with nothing on it, that peak is going to be at 7.27 because all, and then all of these hydrogen are equivalent to each other. You see one peak at 7.27. But most of the time, our benzene ring is going to have some substituent on it. The benzene ring can be mono substituent, substitute, you know what? I'm just gonna put a substituent, since I can't spell today. Mono substituent, now, if you're a mono substituent, what does that mean? That means you have one thing attached to it, right? So you're replacing one of the hydrogen. You're replacing one of the hydrogen. Now, here's the key to knowing how to do practice problem for NMR, is look at the integration because Remember, if you just have a benzene ring that has no substituent, what you end up getting for integration, you would end up getting six hydrogen for integration. Now, if you have a mono substituted, what I end up getting, I'm gonna get five hydrogen for integration. So integration is really, really matters when we're talking about benzene ring because you can figure out, is it mono, is it di, is it tri-substituted, or they have no substituents? Integration matters. Now, because now I have a substit uh, substituent over here, now not all the hydrogen are equivalent to each other, right? Now all the hydrogens are not equivalent to each other anymore because these two would be equivalent to each other because they both are attached to a carbon that is attached to Z these two would be equivalent to each other and then this one would be different right? again look for the symmetry do you see where the symmetry is the symmetry is going to be right here so if i had no substituent all the hydrogen would be equivalent to each other i would have eight six equivalent hydrogen I get one peak and that one peak has an integration of six hydrogen. If I have mono substituent, look for integration. That really, really matters. Make a note. When you look at a benzene ring at around 6.5 to 8 ppm, if the integration is five, then you will know that this is a mono substituent. Mono substi substitu substituted um, benzene ring. So far, so good. Now, when you's not, there's no substituent, all the hydrogen are equivalent. Now, not all the hydrogens are equivalent. Um, so depending on the Z, you're gonna get singlet or multiplet. Um, they're gonna overlap a lot of this. So what you end up getting is a mess. That's what I like to call it. What you end up getting for splitting is a mess because some of them are going to overlap and what you get is basically a mess. But all I want you to know right now that look for integration so you know you have a mono substituent. Now, what happens if you have a di substituent? I'm not even going to try to spell things right now. What happens if you have a di substituent? So, if you have a di substituent, now you're replacing two of the hydrogen, right? But here's the thing. If you have a di substituent, there are three possibilities that you could have. Before I go over that, the key is 
How do you know you have uh, the dye substituent benzene ring? The key is integration. Because if you have a dye, then the integration is going to be four hydrogen. So when you look at the integration for benzene ring around 6.5 to 8 ppm, if you get four, uh, four hydrogen, you go, oh, it's dye substituted. So far, so good? Okay. Now, when you have a dye substituted, the thing is that, though, you could be para, you could be ortho, or you could be meta. Right? Now you have three different possibilities. You could be para, you could be ortho, or you could be meta. But in all cases, you are going to have five, four hydrogen integration. In all cases, you're going to have four hydrogen integration. You're going to end up with four hydrogen. And integration is key. I know I'm going to keep repeating myself. I'm going to keep doing it until you got this down. That integration is key when you look at the benzene ring to figure out is it mono, di, tri substituted, what is it? Now, when you have ortho and meta, it's messy. Oh my God, the benzene ring. I'm going to show you some benzene ring in a while later. It's going to be just nothing but just messy, messy, messy. Okay? But when you have para, it's not very messy. So it's easy to tell if you have para. I'm not going to expect you to know the ortho from meta, but the para is very easy to know. That's because the para gives you a really nice pattern. The pattern is a doublet of doublets. You should know that pattern, right? So what you would end up getting is a doublets of doublets. So when you have a doublet of doublets, and each one is going to have two hydrogen, two hydrogen, you know you are going to have a para. Now, why are you getting a doublet of the doublet? Again, remember, what you're going to have, you are going to have these two are going to be equivalent to each other, and these two are going to be equivalent to each other, right? And what happens is, this is going to be split by this, this is going to be split by that, this is going to be split by this, this is going to be split by that. We've seen that before, right? We have seen that before. We were talking about a double bond. So they're going to be split by each other. So what you end up getting is a doublet of doublet. So if you see a doublet of doublet around 6.5 to 8 ppm, and each one it has four, two hydrogen, two hydrogen, so four hydrogen all together, what do you got? You got a para substituted benzene ring because you get a doublet of doublets. So far, so good? Okay. All right. Really, really nice job so far. I think I'm going to stop here. Okay. We've gone over the NMR. You know what to look for. The first thing is how many peaks you have on NMR, which means how many unique sets of protons you have. Then for each peak, what are you going to look at? You're going to look at chemical shift, integration, and the spin, spin splitting. And that's going to give you a lot of information. Um, what we're going to do next time, I'm going to put up different NMR spectrum. And I'm going to teach you how to figure out the entire chemical structure using NMR and IR. All right. Nice job. Done with NMR. I mean, we're going to do practice problem, but done with the concept. And I will talk to you next time.